Hello and welcome! I'm DDF Racer and today is my first race of the new season in iRacing. Last time out I only just managed to get my minimum participation for my brand new shiny B license so I won't be making that mistake again this season. And a new season with a new license means lots of shiny new things to try as well. So I thought I'd kick things off with a tiny little upgrade from my trusty USF 2000 car straight to the rather ridiculous Formula Renault 3.5. If you've watched a few of my videos before, then you'll probably know I like single-seaters. It's safe to say this is something I enjoy, although it doesn't necessarily mean it's something I'm going to be any good at. The Formula Renault 3.5 is a bit of a beast. It has way more power and downforce than anything else I've driven in iRacing so far, and is pretty much as quick as it gets before you start jumping into the top-level Indy cars or the Formula 1s. All this power with no traction control and no ABS to help kind of scares me, but hopefully this week's choice of circuit on the schedule at Suzuka should keep the corner speeds up and give me plenty of aerodynamic grip I can lean on. At the time of recording this intro, I genuinely have no idea what this car drives like, but I'm about to go and do a lot of practice and find out what I'm in for this season. Hope you guys enjoy! Okay guys, so here we go, my first ever Formula Renault 3.5 race. I am in car number 10 out of, I think, 21 or 22 cars, and I'm actually starting in 8th, although I'm about 1.6 seconds off the pace of the leaders, and I feel massively underprepared for this race. <laughs> Even though I've done an hour and a half worth of practice, I just, I feel quite scared. Uh, this, this is a car that bites you quite quickly, so I do apologize in advance if there is a distinct lack of commentary. I'm going to be using a lot of this, and not a lot of this, I imagine, so... <sighs> Here we go. Let's grid up. Let's give it a shot. 21 laps. The 8. Okay, down. Get ready. Go, go, go. Restart it. Get the clutch in next time. <laughs> oh, words fail me. We got people dying into turn one anyway. What an absolute waste of time. Far out. Someone with a little bit too much power on the start finish line. And no doubt that is going to be a significant chunk of repairs. I, oh, what a waste. All right, let's see what kind of damage we've got. Oh, too much damage. It actually says too much damage. We're done. Well, that's the race over. Far out. I gotta wait another two hours for another one now. So I'm gonna wait two hours and record a race at 11:45 p.m. Fantastic. Before we do that, though, let's have a look at the replay and analyze that ridiculously short start. I don't even think I crossed the start finish line before I got sideswiped and punted. Okay, so here we are on the starting grid getting ready to go. We get a decent start, don't bog it down, and then two cars ahead just bogs and we just got we just got nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere to go and idiots behind just piling in. Seriously, there's an accident ahead. Slow down. So again, we get a decent start, bog it down, had to take two bites, and then, yeah, I just I don't know what to do. And even behind, even behind, look at this. All right, so let's check out this dude then. So he gets a start. He's a few positions behind. Uh, there's a murder up ahead of us. Look at this. Gets it off the line, goes to the outside. To be fair, the guy ahead of him does kind of just turn across a bit, and there's a four-car pileup immediately before... There's the start finish line, hasn't even crossed the start finish line yet. And obviously while that's going on, we're getting boxed in as well. So not really much we can do. We're out of the race um, because obviously we've got too much damage we can't continue. So I'm going to go and have a quick check of the results and I'm going to go and wait around for the next one. Okay, so here are the results. Only one split with a strength of field of 1758. And I managed to lose 0.12 safety rating and 71 I rating, which is uh, actually exactly how I was expecting those numbers to look, really. 
because uh, when we scroll down and have a look at the results, we finished 18th out of 21 cars with a disconnect. Well, it was actually big damage and a disconnect, but hey, it's the way it goes. <sighs> Hey guys, as I'm sure you probably guessed by now, it is not 11.45pm. Um, yesterday was not a good day for me with the uh, start of the iRacing that I had, the fact that I cracked my Anse 3D wheel, and also the fact that I spent five hours trying to record a hot lap video that should have really taken two. So by that point of the day, I was yeah, I wasn't driving well, there was no way I was going to stick around for that race really. So I decided just to call it a day and go to bed. So it is now 8.45 a.m. the morning after and I'm going to go and give it another go now. Fresh mindset, fresh outlook and I'm going to start from the pits this time. Good luck everyone. Okay, so I wasn't entirely sure on the rules for starting from the pits, so I decided to grid. We're on the back row anyway, so I'm just going to take it super easy. 21 laps. Here we go. Okay, now, get ready. Go, go, go. Woo! <laughs> that justifies my decision not to qualify. Immediately off the line, and there's another one up ahead here. Let him go, let him go. I just want to survive, and then we can attack. Although I'm nervous, and the guy behind. You'll have to like, keep your wits about you, mate. Got one in the fence up ahead. Looks like that guy behind me's got no rear wing. Wow. You had to run into me, did you? Just survive, Dan. Just survive. Drive to survive. Oh wait, I can't use that. That's copyright. <laughs> oh man, I'm so nervous. I've never been this nervous driving a car. Well, apart from maybe my real-life driving test. A little lift, just a confidence lift. Far left. Clear left. Alpha Terry just outbraked himself, punted the McLaren into the Shadow Realm. I knew he was going to do that. And there's a couple of freebies. Oh. <laughs> okay. We got some space now. We got some space. We're up to 12. Osman behind is pitting. Should have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race for sure. Oh, it looks Dude. dicey up ahead. What are you doing? It's very dicey. There's going to be some more incidents, I can tell. They're even getting antsy on the voice comms. To survive. 21 laps here today. I mean, it was 21 laps yesterday, but we didn't even, even manage one lap. So we're already off to a better start. <laughs> it's actually quite a fun car to drive. Oh, he's going a bit slow on the outside there. DRS is available in this car, but you only get eight uses in the race. I might save mine for a bit. Let's just back off. Back off, back off. Not worth it. Play the long game. The leader has just done 143.37. Dude, the gosh, what are you doing? Clear one. P11. That 
Forza 48.57. This guy ahead of me is very vocal on voice comms. He was like, dude, what are you doing? I was going to slow it down. Honest, mate. I don't think he believed me, though. I think he's been surrounded by idiots for far too long to know that I have at least semi-decent race racecraft. Anyway, up to 11th. Just making spots. Lots of people making pit stops today. Maybe I've missed something. Maybe you have to make a pit stop. The gap in front has increased. It's now about 0.9. I didn't notice it in the rules. Yellow flag. Are you an idiot, Michael? Are you a fucking idiot? You're parking on the apex. You're not even moving. We got more death up ahead. I was going to say sorry, but if you're going to call me an idiot, then... You deserve it. There's a lot of hostility in this race. And the field is getting a lot closer. Th this this is the true iRacing angst experience that many people know iRacing for. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm in kind of in the middle of it today. Don't want to get anywhere near that guy up ahead of me on the brakes. We got more people coming in the pits. Hmm. This is concerning me. Why is everybody pitting? I've got enough fuel to make it to the end. The lap time was 147.12. That's your quickest lap. Now I'm doing 47s. I know I can do. Low Whoa! One side. Hold your line. Clear left. Woo! Jeez. <laughs> People dying. I'm just catching the gaps now. People dying. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of commentary. This is. This is next level concentration stuff right now. We're already on lap four. And I know I can get this guy ahead of me. I've got the pace on him. I just need to find a way past. Because we close up to him, then we can't do anything with it. I just haven't got the confidence yet. Okay, down. Okay, one car in front. This is obviously my first ever race in this car. So I'm still finding my feet with it, so to speak. Now, if the guy ahead of me pits, because he's obviously got no damage, if he pits ahead of me, I'll know it's a mandatory stop. Oh, he's wide! And now we get stuck in the aero wash of this car up ahead. The dirty air! Drop it down to third, hold the apex nice and tight. Just can't get the grip down otherwise. I can't wait to get a clean lap. So I can just push this thing like the way I know I can. We just can't put our pace down. I'm about two seconds off what I should be doing. I wonder if anyone else has started to use DRS yet. I'm going to try and save mine. For when I need to pull away from my car. And also when I need to make sure an overtake sticks. Just that extra security. I'd be so gentle on the throttle, and I know <laughs> I'm physically leaning into those corners. Yeah, people in the 43s. Gaining on this car, the gap is 
Yes. That's mental. I would like to give a shout out to Dory underscore N, who uh, sent me a setup for this car on Discord last night before my first failed attempt. And uh, sorry for just ranting to to you on Discord, Dory. <laughs> but I really appreciate the setup. So cheers, mate. Big shout out for Dory. Oh, the ray got a bit snappy then. Oh, he's wide again! Where's he going? Where's he going? Give him the space. Right, clear track, let's do this. Nice one, mate. Let's break away, let's get those 45s. Well, I'll be happy with a 46 first, because I don't want to push too hard too soon and bin it. So I believe this is seventh. That's nice. I haven't actually had a chance to look at the relatives on top of my VR headset. I've just been too focused on apexes and exits, eyes down the road, all that kind of metaphorical, motivational nonsense the spotter usually whoo, spouts at me. Okay. I know I've probably already done quite a lot of silence so far, but next lap... It's going to be complete silence while I build that gap and just focus. Okay, here we go. Headphones on, audio up. Formula Renault 3.5 at Suzuka. Enjoy the sound. Seventh position. That lap was at 146.62. Sector so one is 1.3 off the pace. And that's a lap at Suzuka. That was at 145.77, which is the best lap of the session. There we go, that's more like it. 145.7, still two seconds off the leaders. That's just pretty much standard for uh, myself in iRacing. I don't have the luxuries of being comfortable with it like I do over in race room. Not just yet, anyway. Especially not in a brand new car that I've only really driven... Whoa, well, last night doesn't count, really. Buddy, get all that car and leave. So onwards and upwards. Next car is about six seconds down the road. Jose Perez, somebody. I haven't got time to look up at the relative again and read his name, but I know there's three of them. So if the prophecies are to, belie to, to be believed... And don't call anyone an idiot. We might have, to be, uh, might have to be careful. And then fifth place is about ten seconds down the road, so... 
You never know, we might be able to get a top five from last on the grid. If we can keep it clean. Because we are on lap eight of 21 now. And if anyone else, anyone else up ahead of us makes a mistake, we could be in with a few freebies. Yellow flag. Like that! There's fifth place, okay. Sixth place. <laughs> Commentator's curse or what? Such a such a fun car to drive though. You gotta be so careful with it though. Those brakes will lock up so easy. And it'll spin out so easy, even in like fifth gear. It hates curbs. And it, it's so easy to damage as well. It's not like a Mazda MX-5 where you can go and reverse it into the barrier at 100k and be fine for the rest of the race. In this thing, even the smallest contacts will remove your rear wing, will knacker your suspension. You just gotta be so careful. You gotta treat it gently. Yet you gotta push like an animal oh, at the same time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They get behind us now. 5.9 seconds. As soon as you hear those revs rise, as soon as you feel the wheel go light, you just gotta get out of it. Doesn't matter how much time you lose, if you continue that slide, you're going round. I've got massive respect to anyone who can drive one of these things super fast. I mean, maybe with a bit of practice I'll get there, but... Whew. The amount of practice you must need, the amount of confidence you must need... is mental. I mean, I, mean, I will admit that out of the setups that Dory gave me, he gave me a qualifying a sports and a safe. I've gone with the safe one. I mean, for obvious reasons, because... <laughs> Look at this thing! But this is what I love! This is my favourite kind of car. S single seaters is where it's at. And I'm so sad that my ANSI 3D uh, custom wheel is broken. Cracked right down the right-hand side, so the handle's pretty much shaken loose because it'd be perfect for this car uh, well back to the uh, back to the stock standard Logitech G29 wheel for me for a while I think which is probably not a bad thing because I've got to record some rally videos later today now I want to say later today Things are going to get very confusing on the channel soon because I'm going to be recording videos over the next week or two. Because currently it's the end of March. But you're going to be seeing them all the way through the middle of May. Because I'm going to be away from the channel for a few weeks, getting married and honeymooning and all that. So what's going to be a very, very busy few days for me is actually going to keep the next few weeks quite busy for you. So... You know, wheels are going to change, costumes are going to change. I'm going to have them doing so much driving over the next few weeks. Kind of feels like a job. It feels great, actually. I could get used to this. Well, actually, it feels like a job without the pay. <laughs> you know, massive respect to uh, Jimmy who uh, manages to make this his living. I'm sure he goes through days when he just doesn't feel like doing it at all. You know, the motivation's not there, the inspiration's not there. 
But that's, when it's your job, you just gotta do that. You just gotta power through, even when you're not feeling it at the office, so to speak. I say office in inverted commas because it's, well, this is an office for sim racers. You just gotta power through and you gotta do it. And that's one of the things that, if I ever did make this into a job, that's one of the things that does kind of concern me, is that very quickly that passion would disappear because I'd be editing and driving all day. And if I have races like I had last night, where it's basically getting taken up before the start-finish line, I can see how that would pretty much kill any kind of motivation that you have. Ooh, a bit too early on the brakes there. Lost a lot of speed. Okay, so we're now coming up to start lap 12 of 21. We're way past half distance. We're in a solid sixth. All right, Dan, that's half distance. Fuel levels are fine. That was a 146.04. Sector one is 0.8 off the pace. Sector two is 0.4 seconds off the pace. Go. Sector three is 0.7 off the pace. The guy ahead's pulling away. The guy behind's dropping back. We don't really have anyone to race. We've got some traffic coming up. In the form of a back marker, he's going to be going a lap down. Yeah, the gap ahead is, is, is growing. So unless someone makes a mistake, I think this is it. And I don't think we will have to make a pit stop. Now, fuel's going to be good. Tires should be fine. I think pit stop is just for those who had damage. Lots of people would damage at the start of the race, it seems. I'm still calming down from those cars flying through the air. That was mental! It's so much to have a look at in the replay today. This is probably going to turn out to be quite... <laughs> quite a long video. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are, don't forget to leave the video a like. Share your thoughts in the comments. Do you want to see more of this? Do you want to see more Formula 3.5 races? Or are you more interested in things like, you know, GT3s, Porsche Cup, something that's a little bit more tame, yet higher numbers? Or is this your kind of thing, you know, seat of the pants, single seaters? Let me know. And if you really like it, don't forget to subscribe because, well, this is what I do. And if you enjoy this, you might enjoy some of the other stuff that I do. Just, just saying. <laughs> All right, there's another lap. 46 flat. Oh no, 46.4. Well, the pace has dropped a bit. I need to get back on it. It's probably because I've just been talking and not really concentrating too much about my lines. I don't want to do another quiet lap because, well... i got to try and keep you guys engaged. But I might have to, just to get back in the zone again. Guy ahead is getting closer there, but that's traffic, don't worry. Yellow flag. Oh! The guy ahead's getting much closer! Commentator's curse again! That isn't traffic, that is P5! Looks like he spun it. Out of Degna 1 or Degna 2. Did he get damage? Does he have the pit? But now we've got lap traffic and P5 directly ahead of us. He is going a bit slower than normal. Will this guy cooperate? Thank you. Very nicely cooperated there. Thank you, sir. Or oh, madam. How wrong of me to assume? Okay, that's P5. I am going to do a quiet lap now. Let's see if we can catch him. Headphones on again. That lap was at 45.84. Oh, a bit of miscommunication with the back marker then. I wasn't sure where it was going. 
So I backed out of it because I thought it was turning in, but then he turned out at the last moment again. And we've dropped nearly a second already. Damn, that could have been a good chance. We know what they say. The traffic giveth, and the traffic taketh away. The thing is, if he's done it once, he could quite easily do it again. The gap to Munoz ahead is now 3.0. Three seconds. And I've still got eight DRSs. With a tariff as well. So we got three seconds to the guy ahead. We're on lap 14 of 21. We've got all of our DRS allocation. He could make a mistake again. He's done it once. You never know. Oh, he's pulling away though. Mm. Think about this strategically. We do have some more traffic up ahead, but it's about 30 seconds down the road. They shouldn't play a part in today's race, I don't think. Unless they're damaged. <laughs> you can listen to the throttle twitching. I'm genuinely scared of my own right foot right now. But I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. Such a blast. Once you get into the rhythm, It's great. Gap two, Munoz ahead is increasing. It's now 3.8. So, me and three neighbor up ahead, we're pretty much, well, well, we're not exactly the same, but within 100 I rating, which is neither here nor there. Oh, hot tyres, hot tyres, cool it down, cool it down, cool it down. Uh, what I was saying is, we're very similar on I-rating. Um, and he is an a license driver, but as we've seen today, licences mean nothing when you've got people somersaulting through the air. Remember to keep it in third gear for Spoon. The potential extra drive you can get in second is not worth the instability. I'd rather play it safe, rather short shift. Rather just, yeah, stay alive, because that was so close to a bin. We dropped a little bit more time there, another few tenths. There's still a 46-1, though. But ideally, I should be doing 45s. Best lap on race fuel was a 45-1. But I always seem to go slower in the races than I do in practice, for some reason. Don't know why, never figured it out. Maybe it's the pressure. Maybe it's knowing that if you bin it, that's it. Whereas in practice, if you bin it, you can just go, ah, oh, do another lap. We come back to the pits, reset, whereas in the race, that's it. So maybe subconsciously there's just like a, a threshold that activates that says, okay, Dan, don't, don't go above 95% whatever you do, whether I like it or not. Remember third gear, keep it in third gear, use low revs, keep it stable, progressively feed the throttle in, perfect. Perfect. It's gonna get near to that time when we need DRS. We're on lap 16. Starting lap 17 now. We've actually brought the gap down that lap. The lap time was at 1.45.32. today. This is off the pace. 
There's a 40. No, 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 no. Sorry if I held you up there, Ahmed. Just recovering from a spin. Sorry, dude. You're all right, bro. I was going to say, goes and sets a 45-3 personal best of the race. Here we go. Let's have it. And then immediately goes and bins it. Well, I guess that's P5 out the window. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> well, he binned it up ahead. Smith is closing the gap. It's now 9.4. He binned it up ahead. And then I binned it as well. So I suppose that cancels out. Because you were about 10 seconds behind him before he went and lost it at Degna. So I suppose that's fair. You know, we had to... <laughs> the, the, the playing field had to level it out at some point. But my concern now is with four laps left. That Britain Smith guy, who is now behind me on the relative... He was in fifth at the start of the race, or near the start. He binned it, and he's been slowly catching that back, so I've got to kind of keep an eye out behind now. I don't want to lose a spot back down to seventh. Okay. Oh, it's so frustrating. We had the pace to maybe catch him if we carried that on as well. Just, that's what I mean. The rear of this car just goes round. So easy. And you get lulled into this sense of security where it's like, right, okay, I am speed! You go and set a faster slap and then you just... That's eye racing. You cannot push the limit too hard. Too hard. And often the harder you push, conversely, the slower you go. Eye racing is all about being smooth, all about being consistent. Something I found all about at the Bathurst 12 Hours with Aidan Millwood and Matt Webb driving for Zencho. A hell of a race that was. And to be honest, I'm so glad I did that race because that race has saved me, saved my safety rating. Because that gave me so much safety rating. I've been, like, resting at 4.99 for, like, a month or two now. And I've had uh, scruffy races, and it's not had any effect whatsoever. I've been resting on my laurels, I believe the phrase is. Smith behind is increasing. It's now 9.5 seconds. And it is funny, though, that in, like, four hours... Four and a half hours of driving at Bathurst, I got the same amount of instant points that I've currently got <laughs> in half an hour here. Okay, let's keep it clean to the finish. I'm not going to gain any positions on track by pace. I'm not going to lose any positions on track by pace. There is no reason to try and push for faster slaps and do a Sebastian Vettel at the end of the race, you know? Back in his Red Bull days when he was leading from lights to flag. Not that I'm leading from lights to flag here. I would very much dearly be leading. I like to be leading from lights to flag here. But that's what he used to do. Much to the annoyance of his engineers. Go and turn it all up on the last lap and risk it. I don't need to risk anything. I just need to bring it home for solid six. Which actually wouldn't be bad. Because yeah. Like I said, I don't I don't think we started dead last 17 cars in today's field. We started second to last on the grid and what a what a good decision that was because I don't think I would have finished much higher than this if I'd have qualified anyway. And the chances of being caught up in an incident were much higher. Because I saw a lot of people coming in the pits at the start. So I kind of feel very good about my decision now. Ten place gain so far should be on for some okay eye rating. 
because we're car number nine. I don't know what happened to my voice then just completely broke when I said I rating. It's <clears throat> we should be on for some good I rating today. There we go. That's more like it. Car number nine, finishing sixth in a 2.1k strength of field. Two laps to go. Bring it on home, Dan. Bring it on home. But don't lose focus. You can't just cruise it round and go, yeah, I'm, I'm going to finish the race now. Because quite often, when you kind of zone out a bit and go, yeah, I'm safe, that's when the mistakes creep in. So you've still got to keep 100% focus, but just not, you know, don't attack those curbs. Don't try and push those acceleration zones. Just don't try and get on the throttle too early. Just, you know, just keep it within. Instead of 95%, just like 85% maybe. And you might be surprised how many times, like say in a practice session, you go, right, I'm just going to chill for a few laps now. You might be surprised how many times you actually end up going faster because you just kind of relax into the car. But then when you go and try and search for the pace, it never happens. It's... You got it, brother. It's one of those... One of, one of those weird kind of paradoxes of sim racing. Okay, coming up to uh, start the final lap next time round. White flag, there we go. Last lap starting now. Didn't use a single TRS, didn't have to. The gap to Munoz ahead is now 17 seconds. Last lap. Yeah, realistically, I don't think I would have caught that guy anyway. He's pulled out even more since then. And I know I've not been like 100% on the pace. Well, like I just said, 85% on the pace. <laughs> um, yeah, it would have been risky. I probably would have binned it again if I'd pushed too hard to try and get him. But I'm enjoying my second attempt at Formula Renault 3.5 at Suzuka. A lot, of them, a lot more than my first attempt, that's for sure. I'm also struggling to get my words out because my brain is kind of toast right now. I think the leader's already crossed the line. Damn you, quick chat. Yep, leader's already crossed the line. We got people disconnecting. Well done, Francisco. Through Spoon for the final time. We're second down on our best pace so far. Should we use the DRS just for just for fun? Nah, let's leave it. <laughs> it should give me bonus I rating for not using any DRS. Push, push, push. We can catch this car. Are you kidding me, Spotter? <laughs> we can catch this guy. Sometimes I wonder. Okay, final corner. Don't do a rubber cubitzer. There we go. <laughs> Across the line. The truck temperature is increasing. It's now 23 Celsius. B6. And there's the finish. Good result, mate. Well done. Oh, that feels like a victory. <laughs> that really does feel like a victory. That. Oh, that was tough. That was so tough. Just eyes on stalks, feet on hair triggers. Arms on standby to just get the opposite lock on at a moment's notice. Brain going 10,000 million miles an hour trying to just analyze what everyone else around me is doing so I don't get caught up in the mess. Went from 16th to 6th there. Didn't really make a single on-track overtake. Just waited for people to fall off the road ahead of us, but sometimes that's just what you gotta do. Now let's go and have a look at the results and the replay. <laughs> oh, I like that. That was fun. Okay, so here we go. Start the race. 16th position. I intentionally made a very slow start off the line. Just let them just have at it. And yep, yep there they are. One, two, three, four. So what actually happened though? Let's have a look. Okay, so it's this guy. Oh! Where's the guy behind? In the Alpine livery. They had a good start here. 
and then just didn't take into account the fact he was slow for the line. So immediately that's two out of the way. And we fast forward back onto my car here. And then we got someone else going off up ahead as well in the Alpha Tauri livery. So what happened to him? Let's have a look. So he just sends it into the first corner. Giving a bit of room on the inside just to be safe. And round goes to the rear. Pretty much exactly what I did. And then as we progress a little bit further around the first lap. Here's the guy on comms who was complaining about being taken out. Let's have a look. Oh! Oh, that's a double murder. Oh. Oh, lovely eye racing physics though. <laughs> so he's in sixth, holding it nicely. Guy ahead just... Uh, there's not much in it there, just gets on the brakes and doesn't really slow down. We've all been there, we've all done that. And we're still on the first lap now, guys. This is crazy, there's so much action. Uh, this is when we ghost out the uh, Alpha Towery guy. So we go and try and make a move for, I think, 10th. And the Fonchi Kane, he breaks. Oh, dear. Oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, so what I think happened is he was looking at his mirrors, not his breaking point, and then... Oh, what a murder. What a murder. That... That's pretty rough, that. Okay, so now we're on lap number four. We're in 10th, and this is the guy that's in P6. Now, I remember seeing a car flying around in, in, in mid-air up ahead of me. So he goes wide, spins in. Oh, and nowhere to go. So this is eighth place guy. You can see it happening up ahead. He just spears across the track. Oh, that's what happens when you get on the grass in racing. It just goes, and then we're side by side with him. He backs out of it, concedes the position. Very smart move. He could have fought that. Okay, so the next few laps of the race is me just getting stuck behind this guy. So this is ultimately for seventh position. So he just, yeah, just understeer, just understeer across the grass and actually backs out of it and lets me through. Doesn't try and just pursue the issue any further. So sensible driving from him there. Again, he could have made life a lot more difficult for us, but he opted out of that one. And this is the guy who suffered the commentator's curse. Car number seven running in fifth position on lap number eight. I said, hey, if we get some more freebies, we'll get some more spots, and there it happens. <laughs> Just got on the power too early coming out the final chicane, and that puts us up into sixth. And then that was pretty much it, really, for the rest of the race. I mean, it was pretty tense trying to watch those gaps come down, trying to close it up on the guy ahead. Obviously, he binned it, and then I binned it, and kind of the gap went backwards and forwards, but ultimately, we couldn't get him. But 16th to sixth isn't a bad result, so... Speaking of results, let's go and see how that affected my I rating and safety rating and that CFAT kind of made up for the damage done in my first attempt last night. We gained 44 and also gained 0.09 safety rating, so I'm not quite back up to 4.99 yet, but it's not far off. Um, we didn't gain back as much I rating as we lost in the first race because we didn't really win this one, but I'll take it to be honest with you. And I mean, into the points too, it could have been zero if it wasn't for that bin. It could have been zero and it could have been fifth place if it wasn't for that bin. That, oh, that could have been, that could have been better, but hey, let's not worry about what could have been. Let's just worry about what we actually did do. Started 16th, finished in sixth, car number nine, two instant points. That's a much better experience than the first time around, and I am happy with that. But that kind of puts me in a bit of an awkward situation, really, because that is the absolute proof of whether you should or shouldn't qualify in iRacing. <laughs> we qualified, we got binned before the start-finish line, we didn't qualify, we gained 10 spots on the grid. Ultimately, I'm going to finish around the same position anyway, it's just whether or not you have to fight from the back or try and just avoid the carnage. I mean, we still avoided lots of carnage starting from the back anyway, but I think my mindset was a lot more like the Bathurst 12 hours was like, let's just survive this. So. I don't know how I'm going to approach my future Formula Renault 3.5 videos, actually, because qualify or not qualify. I would love to know what you guys think. Please, do you qualify if you do this in iRacing, or would you just sit at the back as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like, and subscribe to see more, because I will be doing more, because I get the feeling that I'm going to fall in love with this car once I get used to it a little bit more. Until then, make sure you guys look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.